Hi everybody, it's Agnes. I'm interviewing a very special lady, Caitlin Moon, and she is currently in Ireland. <laughs> I love the cup. Oh my God, with yeah. the east from the east. Yes, Caitlin, tell people just so they know where you're from originally. Um, okay, when people ask me, where are you from? I generally go, have you read Faulkner? I mean, um, I'm from a very rural area in between Baltimore and Philadelphia that's just like a great piece of American Gothic and I'm glad I'm not there. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not there. No, you'd much rather be in a blizzard of snow in Ireland today. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. You know what? That's the good thing. I'm in the blizzard here in London. You're in a blizzard over there. But this is the things we can do when, we're, when we can't venture out. We can actually have a, a good interview and talk about law of attraction and Neville Goddard and how to manifest. So Sounds good. <laughs> at least we're not bored. <laughs> so we're going to actually start. You did share a little bit about what you did manifest which was healing your incredible injury i'm gonna hand it over to you to talk about that um okay i feel like i should be giving a ted talk or something <laughs> but um i am head injury girl apparently <laughs> that's it head injury girl um so about it would have been 10 years ago this year, I had my concussion. I had been training for the Olympics for figure skating and I was doing really well. And I think I was just kind of naturally applying the law of attraction to that, like just focusing on winning and getting medals and doing really well. And I, let's see. But I had my accident and that was, I think, rooted in me not feeling good enough, all these other things. But I mean, accidents happen. And I ended up landing a double axle, like two and a half rotations on the back of my skull, which is enough force. It's like jumping out of an airplane. Jeez. And I fractured my skull. I destroyed the nerve endings that control your balance. Like the, it's called a vestibular concussion. And I almost severed my retina in my right eye. And they didn't think I was going to survive the first 48 hours. And um, I ended up spending the next eight months in the wonderful AI DuPont hospital, where I relearned how to walk, read, and feed myself. And, um, that was a really difficult experience. And I know that a lot of people would have, I don't know, become addicted to pain medicine and all these other things. But in that period, especially when I was bedridden, my dad went out and my dad is my best friend. And I think of the universe as my dad, like it loves me and it wants to spoil me. So he went out and he got me a bunch of books to put into a Walkman. And the first one he popped in was The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. And there was just something about her voice and the way the stories were presented that I just wanted to listen to it over and over again. I had no short-term memory at that point, but I just wanted to keep listening to it. And I started applying it and I started realizing, okay, I can get through this. There is no reason why I can't get through this. And I would visualize really intensely just like being back at the rink, being on the ice, chatting with my dad, just those minute sensations, like how cold it was, the feel of the wind as it's gusting around your body, um, just my, the way my dad smells after he shaves, like those really tiny senses. And Within a year, I was back on the ice. Wow. Wow. I didn't know that part of the story. Yep. That's amazing. So you would have been about 17 when you got back on the ice. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And um, 
I ended up, they thought I wasn't going to be able to complete high school or what do they call it, college over here. Um, but I did and I did very well. I graduated on time and I ended up going to the, my undergraduate university where I had been skating. And I had a, another smaller injury. I think I just twisted my ankle really wrong. And I remember sitting on the ice and thinking, you know what? I'm going to university in the fall. I don't need to do this anymore. Wow. And I, and that's the end of it. But um, I do miss it. And um, there are lingering repercussions from that injury sometimes, but it's just choosing to ignore it is the best way to put it. Because if you dwell on the fact that you're physically in pain and you think of it as a limiting factor, mm. then of course you're going to be limited. But like, I had to completely retrain my body how to balance. Like you right now are consciously, like subconsciously aware that you're in a body. Yeah. Like you have that internal mechanism. <clears throat> I had to learn how to feel the floor beneath me and that's how I walk and that's why I don't like boats because the floor yeah. moving wow yeah so um what an amazing well just the fact that your dad bought you that book for starters he could have bought you any book but he buys you that book which is about the law of attraction and also and that you applied it while you're laying there I, I had nothing better to do yeah, that no, was a, as a life-changing moment, really. It really is, and I mean, I was such a daydreamy kid, and I'm such a, still like a daydreamy person anyway, that it just made sense, like, oh, this thing that I do anyway, it can actually be productive, and I don't shape the world I live in. Yeah, yeah, that is such a brilliant... Well, just use of the, well, the thing is too, this is why I find this, this story of yours so incredible. When you need to heal yourself, you need your mind to be able to function, to be able to get the healing to work. But your injury was actually in the part of the body, which is what was the part of the body that was needed to actually focus, to be able to heal yourself. That's why this healing is so extraordinary because that, part of you was knocked out. Yep, and I've got some permanent damage, but I mean, I, I don't have any magic words to say. I just, you, you gotta do it. Yes, yeah. Not doing it was not an option for me. Not doing not it was not an option. To, mm. I was not about to sit there and be a vegetable for the rest of my life. It's like, if you're incapacitated like that and people are, like I was physically incapacitated, but I understood most of what was going on. I just couldn't respond. Mm. And I remember we were in a doctor's appointment or the doctor had come to me and he was a rather famous neurologist and he actually put my case in one of his books. And, um, cause it should have happened. And he said to my mother, um, she will probably never, be more than a vegetative state. She will probably always be mentally incapacitated. And I just remember a resounding feeling. You! Yeah. <laughs> Isn't and it I great when the spirit it. rises up and goes, that's crap. No. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. And so, like, you were so young to even go through that, like, for starters. What a, what a, I mean, obviously it's not a good thing, but what a blessing, what it created in your mind to be able to get, to focus your way out of that. Yeah. And I think it happened at a good age too, because if it was, if it happened to me when I was younger, I think I would have been like, Oh, this is a great excuse to get off school. Yeah. Instead at that point, like I had a, I had a dream and a goal and a direction outside of skating. Yes. So yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous. So going on from that, you and I were discussing at length 
when we've had contact about the spotlight meditation. And I wanted to ask you if you were willing to talk about it because you had incredible results in a short period of time. How many times did you do it before you actually got a result? I think once. Yeah, you did it once. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. So I had, I have a very complicated relationship with my mother and all of the women in my life. Um, and I think I'm trying to phrase this in a way that's diplomatic, but kind of addresses the situation. Um, my mother came from a very abusive home and she internalized this and viewed it as a rejection from her family. Like we were never included in Christmases or Easter's or anything. And so my mother, just constantly thinks about the fact that she's rejected from her family, which are not great people. I mean, I don't want to be around them. Yeah. And um, so I saw that as a child, her existing in this constant state of rejection. And then I saw the neighbor who lived next door to us, who had been in the room when I was born. And she and my mother became enemies, like flat enemies. And I saw that again as a and I had been good friends with this woman's children and suddenly they were no longer allowed to play with me. They would have birthday parties next door and not invite me and be hooting and hollering and all this other stuff. Here's my Maryland accent coming out. <laughs> not the Irish one. Uh, no. Okay, tall. <laughs> I get to school as a child. So I never really fit in. I never really had like the group of friends. And it was just photocopy, rejection, rejection, rejection. And so, um, and of course, like that never feels good when you're not welcomed by your biological family. But you know, yeah. it's what you create, it's not what you're given. So I ended up being a a little worried about going home for the first time for Christmas. And we talked about doing spotlight meditation and I made a list of 13 people, I think it was. And I started with my mother and I had her tell me, you deserve to be loved, you deserve to be cherished. I love you, all, all that. <coughs> and then I went on to her mother who's now deceased. And then I went on to my dad's stepmother, who is a piece of work, and did the same thing. Um, I did a couple of teachers that I had been close to and falling out with sort of disagreements and threw in my specific person in at the end just for laughs and giggles. <laughs> so I get home and my mother is like a changed woman. It was incredible. She was saying verbatim everything I had her say. She was affectionate. She was loving. It, we had a really great visit. Wow. In that visit, I had contact from the moment I set foot in Philadelphia on the airport from two of these teachers that had been like adopted mothers to me, who I've not had contact with in four years because Italians. <laughs> <laughs> so that was two people in the in the spotlight yeah. meditation yeah two people in the spotlight meditation the first day there wow then my dad tells me um i didn't want to tell you this i did. beth his stepmother had been diagnosed with stage four cancer and really wanted to talk to me and apparently like this person who has been at my throat for my entire life is suddenly saying things like, oh, I do love Caitlin. I think so well of her. Wow. Um, so it was just a really interesting kind of a thing. And then I got a response in a dream, not a physical response. Um, I've been in, 
I don't even want to call it a relationship. It, let's be Victorian and codify it as a romantic friendship. <laughs> it really went tits up. <laughs> um, I guess that'd be four years ago now, five years. I can't even remember. And um, it ended up exploding in my face. And I remember like getting this horrible email saying like, we were never friends and I never want anything to do with you. Your affections are repulsive and all sorts of great things like that. Wow. Contact me again because I gave this person too nice of a Christmas present. And I ended up getting a box with all of my stuff in it back on Christmas Eve. Wow. Yeah, fun times. So, and I internalized that deeply, and I've just recently come out of that because it was affecting yeah. my specific person. But I had a dream over Christmas that I was standing in the kitchen with Lydia, who's like my godmother, and looking at my phone at this email, I'm like, look what I just got. Can you believe it? Like, it was a rambling, like, eight-page email that I could read every single word of. And Lydia looks at me, and she's like, well, maybe they had a stroke. That was in the dream. That was in the dream. But it, it was like a little mini reality that would have. Yeah. And I ended up getting some closure from that. Wow. That was, like, about four people, four, four yeah. or five. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Five, I think, yeah. Five, yeah, including your oh. mom. And then um, she actually, I have a neighbor in the lineup as well, and she ended up running into her and having a very nice chat. Oh, beautiful. So I guess wow. That's wow. And that Absolutely. was doing it once. Doing it once. Yeah, you did it, you did it in Ireland, then you caught the flight to Philadelphia, and that's when it all started to happen. Yep. Yeah, it's a very quick amount of time, really. I'll actually, I'll put the spotlight meditation down below in the description for those people that haven't seen it, but it is there to repair and really dissolve the parts of you that have kept these relationships in the state that they're yeah. in. Because as we know, if you've got problem active within you about someone then that problem still goes out as a tentacle. As Neville says, the past is still alive within you and it creates the situations that you have with people today. So, wow, that was amazing. I mean, I did that meditation and I had a very, very amazing experience too. I put all the men in my life and that's why we ended up talking about it. I started with my dad and then I did all the men in my life. And you can do it with all the women, you can do it with all the men, but it's a really great way to go back especially to old childhood stuff because that's usually where it all began and you're still carrying that childhood stuff around. So that was the reason that that spotlight meditation was created. So now coming forward to 2018, what's happening now? Um, well, I am in the middle of a really big manifestation. Um, I'm doing my PhD at Trinity College. Yeah. And um, I got here through watching one of your meditations and applying it in a different way. I think it was the text message one. Yeah. yeah. That's how I found you to begin with. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Um, well, I wanted a text from a specific person, but I think I got something a little better. Yeah. And um, let's see. I remember I was lying in bed in my apartment in Philadelphia, and I just... I was doing the text message meditation. I imagined it being my email instead of a text. And I just focused on the words congratulations with an exclamation point. Yeah. And I heard my computer ding. And it was the acceptance email from Trinity saying that you're in. Wow. The thing is, like, it was a little bit late, like, by American standards, everything in Ireland's a little bit late. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, w I remember I was actually getting a little worried about whether or not I was going to get in. And I would tell myself over and over, Trinity has a place for me. Trinity has a place for me. Yeah. And here we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
but I mean, I wouldn't have even considered, I wouldn't be where I am right now if I wasn't trying to manifest this specific person um, who I met summer before last on this bus tour that I decided to do. And it was love at first sight kind of a thing. It was magical, but I was carrying around all that baggage. Like as much as I understood the law of attraction, I was never practicing self-love. Mm. And so I kept thinking about that friendship that had fallen apart and how worthless I felt and how like my mother would say things like, oh, why would that person ever want you? Or things like that. Like she really made me feel like my affections are repulsive. Mm. Any level, like be it platonic, be it romantic, whatever. Yeah. And and so I met this incredible person that is just like absolutely a dream. And I was thinking, oh, there's no way, no way whatsoever. And I remember like being on the, on the bus and just like daydreaming about getting a kiss. And it turns out it was a very mutual thing. And I got at the ripe old age of 25, my very first kiss ever. Lovely, lovely. Blinking. <laughs> Uh, lovely. Yeah. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to Ireland. I'm getting out for four years. And I mean, I needed to focus on in that time frame. I met this person. I needed to decide where am I going to do my PhD? Where am I going to go? I didn't want to stay in the States. Yeah. And it just all worked out. And we're not actively in contact at the moment, but I'm working on it because again i've just recently gotten rid of that belief of no one could ever want you your affections are repulsive yeah 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 stuff people say to us really sticks hey especially from parents yeah but i don't know i try to use the law of attraction for everything because like when you get bogged down in a specific person and i'm guilty of this as well it's like i've had amazing results I've had truly incredible moments, like, um, two, what was it, Monday, I had an email from an, a best-selling author asking me to text her. Um, I ended up finding an agent that wants to publish a novel that I am not even finished writing. Yeah. One of my friends who is in London, actually calls me up and says, we're going to Athens for Easter. Do you want to come? All you got to do is pay for your plane ticket. Everything else is taken care of. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and then I talk to my dad and he's like, well, when is this? And I'm like, these dates. And he's like, well, I'll pay for your plane ticket. Oh, beautiful. So, that was a oh, really good day of manifesting, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> and it's like, I... You can do it for little things too. It's like I've got Connie Constance Markovitz behind me. Yes, tell us a little bit about her. Okay, so my specific person loves Constance Markovitz, and I love her too, or she wouldn't be here. And I decided to do my apartment up like an upscale Irish cottage, you know? So I decided I wanted like vintage Victorian photographs and she's the only one I've got because she came a little bigger than expected. <laughs> it took, I ordered her like as soon as I got here and six weeks go by and I was starting to be like, oh my God, they've lost my poster. What is going on? Because I've had issues with the Irish Post. And I was like, you know what? just going to visualize this. And I had a friend over with me for a couple of days and she's like, you know what? I'm going to visualize with you. And we just imagined where we were going to put her, what she was going to look like. And it was the next day we were, I was actually helping her do her hair and the doorbell rings. And I said to her, if that is my poster, I will eat my hat. And I run downstairs it's Connie. <laughs> and she was supposed to be about a third of this size. Wow. Yeah, she's big. Hey, it's um, beautiful. Beautiful. She's stunning. And it's 
a little bit about Irish history, it's actually kind of poetic because the jail, Kilmainham, where she was held, you can just see off my balcony. And it's like, wow. And don't forget to minute to mention the what factory? <laughs> the Guinness factory. <laughs> you can't see it right now with the snow. <laughs> yeah, the Guinness factory is right opposite your flat. I think that's brilliant. How appropriate. And I'm right on the Liffey. It's a great, and the thing with the Guinness factory is special to me because we were there on the bus tour. And I remember looking over and thinking to myself for the first time, maybe I'm not the only one with a crush here. That's brilliant. Little memories. Yeah. But um, Ruth, my friend that is helping me manifest, and then there's Abby, who I think you're going to be talking to. I've got, I've booked an interview with her, yes. Um, they've had some really interesting results with this technique. I don't know if it's, it's something I made up. I think it's branching off of Neville's congratulatory scene. But like, we'll start having conversations as if, we're in that state of having whatever it is we want. And like I, Ruth is a professional dancer and she part of a troupe that travels. And there was a little bit of an issue with, you know, work. And we sat down and I talked to her as if like, oh my God, I can't believe that all got resolved. I can't believe, and like, and we named specific names I'm not gonna get into. And, a couple of days later, Ruth and I were supposed to go, I don't know, to dinner or something. And she's late. And I'm like, this is weird, like really late. She comes in and she's like, you won't believe what happened. Verb she'd run into her boss and verbatim, everything happened as we discussed it. And she and I will have conversations like this regularly. And she'll be like, hey, stop. It feels too weird. It's weirding me out. <laughs> That's one. So what are you saying that you're talking, you're talking it as if it's happening? Yeah. It'd be like you and I sitting here and be like, oh my God, Anya, I can't get any work done. This person, my specific person just keeps texting me and I, I've got to get this chapter done. I've got to get this in. I don't, the hell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's living in the end. That's yeah. living from it. And I think living in the end is kind of a hard technique to do, at least for me. I'm starting to focus on being in that state of what it would be like if I was in love and yeah. well, in like a relationship with this person that I want. I'm like, okay, well, I'd probably be going to get my nails done. I'd probably yeah. be admiring myself in the mirror. I'd be putting in more effort with my makeup. Yeah. And so like those things are easy enough to do. Yes. And I, I read Kamal's book, um, Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. Yeah. And that kind of made me realize like more than falling in love with another person, you need to fall in love with yourself. Like yourself is your best commitment. Yes. I don't know. It's like I try not to get bogged down in the specific person too much because I'm, not, I'm a whole. Yes. I mean, it'd be wonderful to have this person in my life. It'd be a lot of fun. And that's what I'm focusing on. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. It's got to be self first. And that book of Kamal's is so brilliant for that because it just makes such simple sense to do the, I love myself that way it permeates from you and to be in in a state where you are getting romantic attention, love attention from another, that's the vibrational match. As Abraham Hicks says, you're in self-love, therefore they can come in and love you because it's, it, it's on the same wavelength. Yeah. And I mean, if nothing else, saying I love myself or this person loves me or whatever your affirmation is. Yeah. It makes yourself feel better. It does. Yes. And that's why I do it. Like I, I, you know, you get a little nervous when there's a couple thousand people listening. <laughs> Don't worry. It's just you and me. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be eloquent and I'm like, and I'm really trying hard not to be too dramatic. No, you would just be you. You're good. You're good.
Yeah. Okay. I, I have to say, I love the eyelashes. I just thought I'd mention that because oh, thank you. It, it very much suits you. It's very cute. Thank you. <laughs> and that's part of like what you were talking about, doing your makeup, doing your hair, putting on clothes. That's not just for another person. It's for you, your own dignity. And that's something that kind of was taken from me when that friendship, relationship, whatever it was. Ugh. Yeah. Like I gained 50 pounds. Yeah. Felt awful about myself. Like how, and I'm a fairly sensitive person. Like I think I am very empathetic. Yeah. I remember thinking to myself, how could I have done this to someone that I care about so much? How could I have been so blind? And I realized I wasn't blind. This had, as much as everyone is you pushed out, this person had their own issues going on. And I just got caught in the tailspin. But what's great is you, dis you worked on yep. you dissolving and sweeping your side of the street. This is what I love about, about you, Caitlin, is you went, okay, I can't fix them. I can't do anything about them, but I can pull off the tentacles of, you know, like you said, what your mum said to you, you went back and looked at what is it that's keeping me stuck here and I'm going to work on it and dissolve it. And you did the spotlight meditation, you've done coaching, you've done lots of different things, reading, you're looking at YouTubes you'd, and you've got a good mind that dismantles things. Cause my mind's dismantled. <laughs> I think this is where I'm going to say, Caitlin speaks how many languages? 13? 17. 17. Okay. And, and mention the one, the Gaelic one while we're here. Which, which one? I mean, uh, there's modern Gaelic and then there's old Irish, which is from the 8th century that I'm doing for my research. And you sp have to speak in class in those languages? It's a very, ba very basic sentence structure at this point, but old Irish is like the chemistry of language. It's like each word is an element that triggers a reaction in another word based off of what that word is and where it goes and what it Wow. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's like chemistry, but in a language. So. In a language. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I love how your mind is so fascinated by that. Like you just, you can go off on a tangent with that. And I mean, it's something that is integrally mine. It's just something. Yeah really passionately interested in and I mean I got interested in languages because when I was 13 or 14 my dad took me to meet one of his customers my dad owns a small business and we were putting in a heating or air conditioning system for this couple that moved out to the east coast recently and the wife was a quadriplegic she had a horrible accident but she could still kind of talk, but only her husband could understand her. And I remember just sitting there and listening. I was able to understand what she was saying and mm. sit down and have a chat. And she just absolutely cried. Yeah. Me to the point where I was like, if I can communicate with one person like this, imagine what it would be like if I could communicate with many. Yeah. And so I started learning French in school and really excelled at that. That was, it became like my academic identity at that time. And then when I had my head injury, they decided to incorporate language learning to like increase brain function. And so I got back into French. Um, we did a little bit of Latin and it kind of went from there. Wow. That's amazing. That it really is amazing. I mean, the fact that you, your head and mind and brain has been stimulated to the point of, you know, not just learning two languages, but, but the amount that you have. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a parlor trick. It's like once you learn how you personally learn a language, everything yep. kind of falls into place. Mm, like you really see a lot of parallels and a lot of them are very similar. But it seems like each language encapsulates like a different aspect of your personality. Like anytime I'm grumbling about something, anytime I'm just mad as a hornet, it comes out in Italian. 
<laughs> well, some languages express things better, don't they? Oh boy. <laughs> Oh wow! See, um, is it? Yeah, I was going to say, is there something else you want to follow on? It, uh, it's up to you. I it's mean, up to me. go on all day. <laughs> I love it. No, it's wonderful. It's really wonderful breaking down the mechanics of how certain people go around the circle of how to manifest, what things they focus on, what things they prefer. I mean, let me ask you this now with where you're at, because you've manifested being an island, being there, writing a PhD, being there for four years, your specific person is in the vicinity and just, you know, being able to travel to London and also to Athens, Athens when you, yeah, when you get there, because that's in the pipeline. I mean, you do attract a lot of travel. So what kind of what kind of things do you focus on the most now? Is it Neville's techniques or law of attraction or visualizing? What are your kind of favorite go-to things that you like to do? Um, I really like the meditations. Yep. Um, I try to focus on the self-love and the first best. Okay. And from there, I will go and do like a specific person or whatever. But I try to always start my day with the self-love with affirmations. Okay. Yep. And from there, it's just kind of trying to stay in a good state. Yes. Do that. Like I will listen to music that's upbeat that I enjoy. I will, I don't know, go read a book that isn't focused, like isn't primarily for school. I will, I, I like doing old Irish grammar. So I will Wow. Because I'm Hermione Granger. <laughs> wow. If someone wanted to torture me, they'd make me do that. <laughs> Not just Irish grammar, any, any grammar. Isn't it great? We all love different things. Yeah. I mean, it's about finding what you love. Yeah. Makes you yourself and embracing it. I mean, yeah. There are days when I get upset and things get overwhelming. And I think that's when I have to remember just the 51%. Yeah. But um, I, and I also am starting to realize like my shortcomings with this. Like I was looking through like my meditation log that I keep. And yeah. I hadn't been like radiating love to my person. I was just trying to like get the text, get the text. Yeah. And, I think I need to like take a step back and as much as I'm doing the self love, I think I need to also actively send love. To yes. The yes. And you know what? I think that is something that is really, really, really important is that thing of you, when you want a specific person, you're so in longing and in need in the beginning, it's about, I need to get love. I need to get love. I need to get love. And you're, re you're actually flipping and reversing that into giving, 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 giving. That's the work. I, and I think what the, uh, I think the hardest part of the work is getting yourself into that place where you have the resources to give. Yeah. Because if you exactly. do that, it's not going to work. Nope. That's exactly right, Caitlin. And that's why specific people don't show up is because you are still trying to receive love and you need to learn to give it. That's the whole process. And I'm not here just because of a specific person. I want to make that clear. Like I'm here because this is the best place for me to study what I'm studying. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to be in Ireland for some reason. Um, oh, that movie. I wanted to talk about that movie. Which one? The leap year one. Oh, I haven't seen it. Talk, okay. talk about it. So talk about an accidental impress. Um, 2010, I think this movie came out. My parents went to see it on Valentine's Day. It's called leap year. That's got Amy Adams in it and some Irish guy with bright blue eyes and cheekbones to die for. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, my mother was enamored by this. Like it's 
Amy Adams goes to Ireland to propose to her stupid cardiologist boyfriend on leap day. Yeah. It's geographically frustrating because she ends up flying into Cardiff in Wales. And instead of just over to Dublin, all the way around to Dingle, which is somehow also walking distance from the cliffs of Mower. No, but the movie is about her trying to get to Dublin and having all sorts of Chevy Chase level misadventures along the way and ends up falling in love with the guy who takes her there. And my mother made me watch this movie on a loop for five years. Wow. Twice a week minimum, we watch this movie. And is that because she liked it for her? Or she wanted you to like it for you? She loves this. She loved it. Okay. And it's like, okay, great. But it got to the point where, oh my God. <laughs> I really can't stand this. That movie is what made her decide, oh, we should send Caitlin on a bus tour of Scotland and Ireland. I'm like, wow. Talk about a life changing decision. Life changing yeah. decision. Wow. <laughs> Since I got here, I've had Chevy Chase level calamities. Oh my God. But it's as I'm living an impress of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I remember reading there was a, a woman who was an author and she was writing this fiction book and there were all these scenes throughout the book and then it started to be echoed in her personal life. And she was saying the same thing. It's like what you, and it is, it's a focus-based universe. So what you're focusing on is what gets photocopied. And you watch that movie so many times. So many times. And which is a really good example of the mechanics of how this works. If you want something in your life, watch the movies. If you want a specific person in a wonderful relationship, find some movies that actually echo that back rather than watching infidelity movies, which a lot of people watch. And I, I see that, like, by not focusing on, I don't know, romance, like, I've always been like, oh, love story, that's so boring. Yeah. By being like that, I think that's created, like, an absence of that in my life. Yeah, yeah. I remember before I manifested my relationship, I was reading uh, Michelle and Obama's love story. And that book is absolutely beautiful for those people that actually want to manifest and read something that will support what they're doing or what they want. That is a brilliant, brilliant book about, they have a fabulous relationship, those two. And I think a lot of love stories or even music, they're from a place of lack and conflict. And I think that. Yes. <clears throat> and so many movies are about a problem. Yeah. Like I love Disney movies. Uh, they're just a great way to cheer yourself up and it has a great little love story. Everything works out. And when I'm sick, when I'm stressed, I put on a Disney movie. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Also, and remember that woman, speaking of Rhonda Byrne, in her movie, The Secret, and in her book, The Secret, there was the woman that had the breast cancer. And she said she would say constantly, thank you for my healing, thank you for my healing. And they would watch heaps of comedy. And it does. You've got to change your vibe from being in an awful state into a happy laughing state. And it's that simple. You just let the movie do it for you. And I think also just like surrounding yourself with things that make you happy, even if it's something stupid. Like I have this unicorn wine holder. Yes. Actually, let us see it, please. You can't just talk about it. <laughs> it's empty at the moment. <laughs> oh my God. I remember when I first saw it, I cracked up. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> and, like, the bottle goes in. It's yeah. probably the tackiest thing in the world, but I love it. Yeah. Did you order that online? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I would, I'm a quirky bitch. Caitlin, weird people make the world a better place. You know that. <laughs> Love it.
Oh my God. I love it. Oh, and it's just having things like that. I walk into my kitchen in the morning. Even, like I have to go to a 9 a.m. class. I look at it. I'm like, ha! Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's good to have stuff like that around. It doesn't matter. It's about making you feel good. If you, I mean, the thing is you get like, you get to laugh at that thing and it makes you laugh every day. It's definitely worth the money you paid for it. <laughs> My dad's like, I don't understand. <laughs> I do. I understand. <laughs> I love you, dad. That's brilliant. Oh. I don't understand. No, my dad um, is great and uh, he's getting into law of attraction. He believes. See? Yeah, and we have some conversations about this, but like owning your own business, especially in the economy the way it is right now, it is, it's hard. Mm. But, um, but you can, you can imagine like you have been your dad's business doing well, like we've talked about. And hopefully things are taking a profound turn for the better. Yes. Yes, it sounds like it's starting to. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Fabulous. Well, I think we've gone around the world today. That's brilliant. Lots of good subjects. Thank you for coming on and talking about all that because it's, it's so good to hear the mechanics of how different people do things. That's why I love doing these interviews because everybody has their different little quirky way of doing it. Some people have a unicorn. <laughs> Some people, and that may be today's lesson, everybody go and order a unicorn online to put your wine bottle in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it works. You'll probably get messages in the thread. Where did you get that? <laughs> Amazon. What is it? Amazon. Amazon. Well, there you go. Everybody you know, today like get yourself a unicorn. <laughs> you know what's funny, Caitlin, is I, I read a, last night I had this impulse because I was, I was trying, I'm, I'm having two days off a week now because, it, because I'm just, there's too much work coming in and it fries my brain. So I have to take breaks. And I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to just do some random weird things for myself today. I've got nothing to do with work. And then I had this impulse at about 9 PM last night. I have to read a success story. And I thought, you don't need to do that now. And it was this strong impulse pushing me, pushing me anywhere. It was from a woman called Unicorn. Oh <laughs> so there's the connection. There you have the unicorn theme runs very strongly in the last 24 hours. Unicorns are great. They are. As a kid, I hardcore believed in everything. I mean, unicorns, fairies, ghosts. And I figure if I can believe in Santa Claus for 13 years, I can believe in myself for 17 seconds. Exactly. Well said. Well said. Say it again, just for those that missed it. Say it again, because that's exactly brilliant. If I can believe in Santa Claus for 13 years, I yeah. can believe in myself for 17 seconds. Yeah, exactly. That should go on a t-shirt. <laughs> know that I was 13 and still believing in Santa. But. Caitlin, that could be a little side salad business for you. What, offensive t-shirts? Just, just that very quote on a t-shirt, different colors, put a little unicorn logo down the bottom. <laughs> oh, okay, my lovely, well, we'll sign off before my washing machine continues its spin cycle and I won't be able to hear anything. All right. And down the line. Oh, will you be willing to answer people's questions in the thread and all that if you have time from time to time? Um, I'll do my best. I'm not really social media savvy, so I'll yeah. see what I can do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not an expert. I'm, I'm, I'm just a girl with a unicorn. <laughs> okay. All good. All good. All right. Signing off. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you in the next one.